Google released Android 12 Beta 3 to their Pixel lineup with a set of new features and fixes. In the previous video, we reviewed Beta 2. Today, we are again going to review Beta 3 and we will also show you how to get this latest Android 12 update on any Android device with the help of a GSI. So, thank you for choosing to watch this video. Let's get started. Perhaps the most exciting new feature added in the Beta 3 is scrolling screenshots. OEMs have their own scrolling screenshot implementation for years, but Google has been working on a platform level feature since the last year's Android 11 developer preview. Sadly, Google's version didn't make the cut for Android 11's final release. But this time, it is finally here in Android 12 Beta 3, and it is going to stay. When you capture a screenshot of a content that is scrollable, you will see a new capture more button in the screenshot preview, and when you tap this button, Android extends the screenshot to show the whole screen for the user to crop. Icons in the settings menu are muted compared to the colored icons in the previous beta 2. If you ask me, this looks cooler than the previous implementation as this makes the icons more consistent so that they won't clash with whatever theme the theme engine generates from your wallpaper. After you apply wallpaper in Android 12 beta 3, you can simply change the system theme colors and you can either go with the palette options that are automatically generated by the theme or you can pick a basic color to theme entire system. In the wallpaper and styles app, there is a new themed icons toggle. This exposes the functionality that was hidden in beta 2. When you enable this option, the icons for most of the Google apps will follow your system theme. Not only that, but when you turn on the dark theme, these icons will also respond to that. Starting in Android 12 Beta 3, new action has been spotted in the recent apps overview. When you focus on a task that contains a URL or a link, such as a browser, Android displays a link icon that when we tap, it lets us to copy or share that link. If you have accidentally invoked the Google Assistant by swiping up from the corner of your phone, then you will be glad to know that Android 12 Beta 3 introduces a toggle to disable this gesture. It can be found in the system navigation page beside the gesture navigation where there is a settings icon. Upon clicking that, you can access this feature. Speaking of live space, in Android 12 Beta 3, Google has renamed the at a glance widget to live space. Right now, it is just a rebranding as no new functionality has been added. However, this widget is going to get new features in the upcoming updates. Your phone's storage setting will now show you how much storage your phone's trash is taking up. Finally, it seems Google is letting users to manage their phone's recycle bin. And this addition seems to be related to that. In Beta 2, Google simplified the connectivity experience by combining both Wi-Fi and mobile data. But it is an incomplete feature as there is no option to turn on or off the Wi-Fi from there. But in Beta 3, we no longer need to dive into the settings to turn on or off your Wi-Fi, as there is a new toggle right in the bottom left of the internet panel. If you factory reset your phone or buy a new Pixel, you will be greeted by a setup wizard which guides you through connecting to internet and adding your Google account and setting up few new features. But in Android 12 Beta 3, it has much more pleasant design which is much more in line with the material UI theme which is implemented by Google in Android 12. Google finally unveiled the long-awaited game dashboard feature for Android 12 and it's perfectly working in Beta 3. There is a new game settings page in the settings panel where you are able to globally toggle the game dashboard and do not disturb features for games. Along with these, there are also some minor features, but those features are not going to affect the functionality or usage of Android smartphones. Those features are much more like rearranging rather than adding new functionality. These are the important new features that came along with the Android 12 Beta 3. That's it for the review, let's jump into the GSI installation. In many of my previous videos, I already discussed about the GSI installation. But if you are new, then I am going to repeat myself. There are some prerequisites before starting this process. Your phone must have a TWRP recovery installed. If you don't know how to install a TWRP recovery, there is a video that I made about that. The link is provided in the description below. You can watch that and it may help you. The next requisite is an Android 11 custom ROM compatible for your device and which is also a trouble supported one. I personally suggest AICP ROMs. 
which are Android iSchool project ROMs, which are pretty like compatible with this GSI kind of stuff. And next is an Android 12 Beta 3 GSI. You can download this GSI from the link I provided in the description below. It is a zip file. You have to extract that. There is a system.img file inside that zip. So now let's jump into the process. After all these requisites are met, then simply reboot your device into recovery mode. After entering into TWRP recovery, click wipe. After that, select advanced wipe and select Dalvik system data cache and internal, internal storage. Swipe to wipe. Wipe everything and now simply reboot into recovery again. After reboot into recovery, copy the Android 11 custom ROM and the system.img file that you already downloaded into your phone's internal storage. After that, click install, select the Android 11 custom ROM and swipe to flash. After flashing gets completed, reboot into recovery again. Now click install, select install images. Now you will be able to see the system.img file. Now select the system.img file, select the option called system image and now swipe to flash. After this flashing is also completed, you can simply reboot the system and your device should easily boot into Android 12. For my device, which is I'm using MI A2, I have literally no bugs. Everything is working fine. But this may not be the same case for your device because GSI works differently on different devices. It is based on the vendors. All these AICP ROMs that I provided in the description below are all maintained by different developers. So your mileage may vary, but you can try at your own risk. So that's it for this video. Please don't forget to subscribe my channel. Please do like this video, share this video with your friends. And please don't forget to click the notification bell icon to get the latest notifications about our latest videos. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.